In this video how-to, we're going to take a look at how to add a picture to our Windows desktop background. To start, we're going to find out what the current screen size is set to. In both Windows XP and Vista, you should take your mouse, put it into a blank place on the screen, and then right-click. In Vista, you're going to choose Personalize. In XP, you're going to choose Properties. When you click on Personalize with Vista, it's going to take you to an option screen where you can choose from a menu system what you want to do. In this case, we're going to come down and choose Display Settings. With Windows XP, when you right-click and choose Properties, you're going to choose Settings from the Display Property window that comes up. In either case, you're going to get a screen that looks something like this. You'll notice on this screen that we have a resolution option in the lower left-hand corner. This is basically what your screen size is set to. So you can see that in our example, our screen is set to 800 by 600 pixels. This gives us the number that we're going to use when we create our new desktop background. To leave this window, we're just going to cancel out of it and then X closed our other window. Next, we're going to take a quick look and see which picture we want to actually use. I'm going to go in Vista to my User folder, and in Windows XP, you'll want to go out to your My Documents folder and open it up. And then what I'm going to do inside of Vista in my, in my User folder is I'm going to go to my Pictures folder. And again, in Windows XP, your photo is probably somewhere underneath your My Pictures folder. Now, from this point, you, of course, have to know which folder exactly your picture is inside of. Uh, in my case, the folder that I put it into is underneath the 2009 folder, and it's in a folder called Fall Baseball Game. And as I look across here, here's the picture I want to use. And I can see what the name of it is here. You can tell it came off of my camera. It's got that funny looking number for a name, but there's my picture right there. So I've decided on the picture I want to use. I'm going to go ahead and close this window. And then I'm going to start up my Photoshop Elements program. You can use pretty much any image editor to do this. But I'm going to use Elements because that's my main editor. And what I'm going to do is open it up into the edit mode. When we get into the edit mode, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new picture file. I'm going to go to the File pull down menu, slide down to New and then over and click on blank file. In the new window, I'm going to set the width and height according to whatever my screen size was. So in my case, the screen size was 800 by 600. So I'm going to put 800 in the width, and I'm going to put 600 in the height. The resolution in this case doesn't really matter since we're doing, uh, dealing with the computer screen rather than uh, print paper. Of course, you'll want to put in whatever numbers your screen size is right here. I'm also then going to come down to background contents and I'm simply going to choose a white background. When I click OK, I'll have a new picture in a new window. And there we go. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my color picking box, which is over here on the left-hand side, and click. And I'm going to choose a color that I would like for my background. And I think I'll kind of go with a dark blue here of some kind. To choose the color, of course, I can go up and down through the spectrum of different colors by sliding these triangles. And then once I've gotten to a particular color that I like, I can choose the shade of that color by clicking my mouse inside of this box and you can see this little preview change as I click. We'll go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to go over to my fill bucket, which is on my toolbar, and the fill bucket allows me to click on an area, in this case this kind of background empty area, and fill it with whatever color is set as my foreground color. In this case then it filled it up with the color blue that I just got done choosing. Now that I've got my background image set, I'm going to go up to File and Open, and I'm going to browse to where my picture is that I want to use, and I'm going to open it up. So I'm going to go here to the 2009 folder where I found it, Fall Baseball Game, and there's my picture right there that I looked at earlier. We'll click on Open, and there it is. Now I'm going to do a quick check 
of the image size. And I want to make sure that it at least comes close to fitting on my background. I'm going to click on image, slide down to resize, and then over to image size. And I'm not going to change the size of it in this window, but I am going to check to make sure that it, it'll fit on my background. In this case, it looks like it's going to. The width is 700 and the height is 600. Actually, you know, as I look at it, it might be a little bit too big, so maybe I will change the size here. What I'm going to do to change the size is I'm going to come into this box, and what I want to do is make it at least a little bit smaller than my background. And the reason I'm doing this is so that once I paste it onto my background, I will be able to um, resize it easily by grabbing the handles. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to, let's try 500 for the width, and then the height automatically changes to 468. The reason that happens, of course, is that I've got this little checkbox here with constrained proportions checked. That keeps me from distorting my picture. So we'll go ahead and change the size. I'll click OK. Then I'm going to go to the Select pull-down menu and choose Select All that will select the entire picture. I'm then going to go to the edit pull down menu and choose copy and of course that takes this picture and puts it out onto the Windows clipboard. As soon as I'm done with that I'm going to minimize this picture since I don't really need it anymore. Now I'm back to my newly created blue background picture and I'm simply going to go to edit and choose paste there's my picture that's appeared. Now I can do some sizing and positioning. I'm going to come over and cl click on the move tool which is this arrow tool. As soon as I do my picture will have handles around the edges and remember that handles allow you to click and drag and size a picture to whatever size you want. In this case I'm going to take the picture and put it just about like that size. Click the checkbox to finish sizing and then I'm going to put my mouse right on top of the picture and I'm going to move it over and kind of put it in the corner of the screen just like that. Now that I have my background set and my picture positioned right where I want it, I'm going to go up to the file pull down menu. I'm going to do a save as and I'm going to save this picture back to a folder that I can find it in and again I think I'm just going to go ahead and pull it into that same ball uh, fall baseball folder that I got the original from. But what we are going to do is for format we're going to come down here and we're going to choose JPEG as our format. i will make the file a little bit smaller. I'm also going to give it a little bit more descriptive name. I'll just call this one Jack Baseball Background something like that. Now as soon as I click on the Save button it's going to also open up a JPEG options window. This is where we can choose whether we want a low, medium, high, or maximum quality JPEG. Remember, JPEG compresses your pictures to make them smaller, but in the process you lose a little bit of quality. Well, in this case here, since my screen is, is uh, really kind of a, a fairly low resolution device, I'm going to go ahead and just choose medium. I'm going to click OK. And there we go, the picture has now been saved. Now I'm going to go, go ahead and I'm going to minimize Photoshop. I could quit Photoshop, but I'm going to minimize it just so that I can make sure that I've got it set the way I want to uh, before I totally leave this picture. So we'll minimize it here, go back out here to our desktop again. Again, I'm going to right click on the desktop and in Vista go to Personalize. And remember, in XP, you go to Properties. In the Personalize window, I'm actually going to choose Desktop Background. In XP, in the Properties window, you'll choose the Desktop tab. So I'll click on the Background. In the Background window, you'll notice I can choose different backgrounds here, but there's this Browse button I can go to. In fact, you'll see the same thing in Windows XP. You'll see a Browse button. And if we click it, it allows me to go out to my computer, find a picture, and use that as my background. Well, of course, that's what we just got done making. So I'm going to go ahead and come out here to the Fall Baseball. There is my Jack background picture. I'm going to click on Open. Okay and it changes the background. You can see even here it even puts it into a little window here for me. I'll go ahead and click OK and then X this windows closed and there we go. 
we got our new background. I can even drag my icons around to different places on the screen, kind of position them around my background. But there is my new custom background. Thank you.